Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Movie Patrol. I'm so sorry if my voice sounds a little hoarse, I'm still getting over a cold. But I want to welcome back for a limited time only, we have the Movie Troll. Hey guys, good to be back. Um, this will hopefully be a little bit more permanent. I've got some, uh, I'm doing some school out of town right now, so kind of kind of not around. But uh, I'll be back probably in the summer, we'll do this a little more permanently back then. So. Heck yeah. So, just, just here for the holiday break and uh, thought we would review a... A nice little racist movie. It sounded like a thing to do. It sounded like it's a thing like, to do. Oh, yeah, yeah. Racist movie, yeah. That's totally up our alley. Yeah, the movie we are going to be rambling on about, really, is uh, Django Unchained. And because of the censorship that I'm going to have to enforce on this, well, you explain it better than I do. Uh, simply put, they throw around the word... Nigga. Like it's, uh, like it's the, or it. It's just another widely used uh, word because of it's a you know it's a period piece i guess yeah and because it's quentin tarantino i guess and because samuel L. jackson's in the movie i guess um <laughs> it's just they they throw this word around I mean, you could probably like if you made a drinking game out of how many times people say that word you'd have someone you know with alcohol poisoning with the first 30 minutes steve um, we need to do this let's do it um but See. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. So, anyway, because they uh, they throw this this word around so much. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> <coughs> oh, because they throw this word around so much. Because I can't get away with saying it because I'm pale. Um. And I don't want him to have to say it over and over again. And probably because we would have it taken off of uh, YouTube if we said it over and over and over again. What we're word? Going to, hmm? What word? Nigga? That one, yeah. Um, so because we can't uh, use that word, oh, well, I can't, and it's more readily available, we're going to change it to Jar Jar Banks. Or just simply Banks, because if you ask me, that's a racial slur if there ever was one. Correct. I can step away from Aunt Jar Jar Mima. Anyway. Um, so anytime... Uh, anyway... This being established, um, go ahead. The Quentin Tarantino's latest opus of torture and horrible events in, in history. I swear, what is he going to do next? Like, his last one was, you know, about the Holocaust. Now he's doing slavery. It's like, I mean, next one's going to be like Amadeus or something. He's going to be awful. Or like, you know, the Uprising of the Christ. or something. I can just see it. Oh, Quentin Tarantino, Passion of the Christ. I could, oh, I have, I've created a monster. Um... <laughs> So he's just going to like the biggest torturous worst events in, in history and he's making it look great I guess I mean is that a term I should use yeah I think I feel bad now I feel bad for you um, <laughs> uh, the movie stars Jamie Foxx Christoph Walsh Kerry Washington um, uh, oh crap I actually forgot some of their names uh, Don Johnson Leonardo DiCaprio and Samuel L. Jackson Snakes on a <coughs> And honestly, if not for Samuel L. Jackson, I think they couldn't have gotten away with the stuff that they do in this movie. Correct. But I really think that it was, you know, Tarantino was like, hey, Sam, Sam, I re Leo didn't want to say this word. He just doesn't feel like he can. Just coach him on about it, you know. Just be like, coach him on. Yeah, coach him on about it. I mean, Leo said it was some, some gusto, too. He was like... I love Leonardo Damn. DiCaprio in this movie. He did a good job. He was a pretty, pretty like connivingly evil person. All right, before we talk to characters, let's go around with the story. The story around this movie is the fact that Jamie Foxx plays Django, a slave, and he gets recruited by Christoph Walsh, who is a bounty hunter, to try and find these and former dentist and former dentist. That's important. That, that is important. Uh, he uh, Django and and it's really not important. Uh, Django and the dentist go off to find uh, the Brittle Brothers, uh, the Brittle Brothers, who are former slave owners, and really this is a big bounty, big bounty, nice money. Really not that big. Like the one afterwards was like a lot more. Yeah, for that time period though. Well, like the like the first one was like what is it? They were like. I think it was like seventy five, like hundred, uh, thousand, one thousand five hundred apiece, and then yeah. the the one immediately afterwards was like seven thousand. Yeah, they jumped, like, the, they jumped the gun on that one. Oh, man. 
But, that guy does some rough stuff. It's but super- after a series of bounty hunter re and uh, self, self, some good character development, uh, we find out that Jamie Foxx Django's actually has a wife, and he goes off to find her. So this is a love story, somewhere. This is about as close to a love story as Quentin Tarantino can get. It's still blood and violence and banks, banks, banks all over the place. <coughs> it's uh, it's rough, but um, I don't know. I honestly, the feel of the movie was just kind of like you didn't know what to do about it. Like I remember going into the movie and watching the people in the audience. Like immediately as it was starting, first five, ten minutes, and they're throwing around, you know, Binks, 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 don't talk about Binks like that. The Binks you know? on the horse? Yeah, it's like, and and people are like, is it okay for me to say this? Is it it's okay for me to say this? I just don't. I'm like, should I be laughing? I mean, it's kind of funny, but, I mean, they, I, they're saying that word a lot. And they I, do. They it's do. bad. It's bad. It's pretty rough. And then, of course, Samuel L. Jackson shows up on stage, and he's throwing that word around like it's paint on a canvas. Just like... Pow! Binks? Why is this Binks on this flame? No, 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 I understand. I say, I'm just trying to figure out why this Binks is on this goddamn horse. It's just, the whole thing is just, it's going to get awkward saying it like that. It, it really is, but. <laughs> Shut the Binks up. Okay. Binks, please. How does it. Binks, okay. please. The character development between. Uh, Christoph Waltz's character and Django was pretty much it turned out to be a guy buying a slave and then it became a buddy nice little buddy uh, not really a comedy but nice buddy action flick so to speak there was some comedic value to uh, to it but it was very I don't know there, there's a certain thing about uh, Tarantino's movies anymore it's basically whatever the most logical point of like thing to do just screw that. No, let's go this other way. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then we... I, I don't want to shake your hand. No, sir, I don't want to shake your hand. Okay, I'll shake... Oh. Uh-oh. Really? Yeah. How much... So you're going to go to all this trouble to help me get my wife back, and then you're going to shoot the guy that we're selling it to? You're skipping ahead. I'm just saying. I, I thought that was like the stupidest thing in the entire movie. He couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. Uh, we get first introduced to our first really plantation owner, which was Don Johnson's character, Big Daddy. Yeah, Big Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Don Johnson just blew me away with that. It was. It he was... had the Colonel Sanders mustache too, and he apparently was the leader of the KKK, or at least that chapter. That apparently had that a chapter, big problem. That chapter closed. <laughs> That that, uh, that chapter had some wardrobe malfunctions. Did anybody else bring an extra uh, extra mask? No, nobody brought an extra mask. I'm just saying. Okay, we're all in agreement that the masks, though a good idea, were not very well executed. That poor guy's wife spent all night making, making 30, 40, four, uh, like forty masks. Yeah, yeah, forty masks, and the whole and the eye holes weren't big enough. And when they tried to make it bigger, it got ripped. I don't know how expensive sh- um, pillowcases are. But I really don't think that she slaved over that. I feel like a kindergarten class could do the same thing in like 30 minutes. You know, at least the time that arts and crafts takes. I mean, I guess scissors are hard to come by. So. Yeah. Scissors like, you know, like two years before the uh, Civil War. Yes. And, but then we find the main antagonist for the movie, which was Leonardo DiCaprio's character, Calvin Candy. Owning the plantation... Called. Candyland. Oh, everybody loved to go to Candyland. Yeah. Everybody, every slave knows that. Leonardo DiCaprio, for me, for this movie, being the antagonist and just being a slave owner, blew me away. Because I'm still, I still remember Leo as Gilbert Grape's little retarded brother. I still remember him as that too. I especially remembered it when all of my. Uh... All the little girls that I liked in middle school were like, oh, Leo. So, you know, he was really good as a retard. <laughs> no, he is a very talented actor. He, I wouldn't have admitted it back in Titanic, but no. uh, he's a very talented no. actor. No, this uh, this movie definitely showed the chops on how how evil he could really get. He was, he was pretty rough. Um, 
Especially the one scene where they send him to the chocolate or the chocolate swamp and sit, uh, eat him to the or feed him to the monster. Oh, that's the wrong candy land. No, with the dogs eat them like tear them apart and uh, like the one the one guy. I thought that was fucked. That was pretty awesome. It's like it was so awful, but it was cool. <laughs> but uh, again, introduced. They don't let me out very often. They do not. The the dialogue between Jamie Fox, Django's, and uh, and and Calvin Candy was trem- That dialogue was written very well to the point where it was like the big. It was a cockfight with words, and you just didn't know who won. So you're saying it was a cockfight in someone's mouth? Yes. Yes, I am. Is that is that bad? I don't know, man. I don't know. That's uh, that's. We don't like that, do we? We don't. No. 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 Do we, no we don't no. like that, Stephen. Thanks, please. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't care how wrong you uh, how wrong you uh, get with some of this stuff. I just want you to know you're still my banks, man. Thanks, man. <laughs> uh, Jane. Uh, I really hope that doesn't catch on. Oh God. <laughs> see in the comments now uh when calvin candy gets to the plant gets to his gets to candy land we get introduced to samuel character samuel jackson's character he is the uh i think it's the house slave he's yeah, pretty he's much a, the, he's the slave in charge of all the other slaves in the house which that's the lowest slave you can really be that's the highest and the lowest it's like the technically it's the highest because you have a position of power Technically, it's lowest lowest because you're a slave telling other slaves what to do. Yeah, yeah. You're the the the, the slave master slave. Yeah, and as you said, the dialogue between when when Samuel Jackson comes walking out that house and goes straight to Calvin Candy. The thing, man. That I, the thing I found really amusing about uh, uh, Sam's character and the entirety of the movie. It was like whenever they were around other white people, you know, he was, you know, c- kind of doing that that semi yes master yes master thing. But then when he's alone with uh, with any character, just to him and that like just the two of them, he's Samuel L. Jackson. <coughs> Tell him how it is. You know, he's drinking the wine. He's not even asking. He's just, you know, this is the way it's going. You're being made for a fool. Tell it. Telling him his, telling his master to his face, you a dumb shit, basically, and not being nice about it, not you know, yes sir, yes sir, no, it's, it's these uh, these people are playing you like a fool, and you're letting them. Yep. And they didn't come here for this uh, for this Mandingo fight, and they came for this bitch. This is what happens, and you're just getting played by them. <laughs> you wouldn't you wouldn't have given them, you you wouldn't ask two fifty, but you wouldn't have been enticed by two fifty. It's that twelve thousand that you were enticed by, and it's there you go. That's one thing I didn't get through the movie. It's like if she was so low of movie or low costing, pretty much she's uh, Django's wife that Candy owns with only two fifty. Is like why why not just go over there and just ask to buy her for two fifty? Because nobody would. It, it's not worth his time. Two fifty is not worth his time. So pretty much they wouldn't have even gotten. They wouldn't, an wouldn't have even gotten an audience. It's like. You want two fifty for this this slave that I don't care care about one way or the other? <laughs> you want me to take you all the way to all the way over here so you can just get this one bitch for me? No, I'm good. It's cool. Go away. Mm. Okay. But with the by enticing them with you know wanting something else, they could make that extra bargain and then bada bing bada boom. And then of course when they find out oh they didn't actually want this other guy, which what was gonna happen if they did buy that guy? I think that they were actually going to buy him and her. See, I think that they were going to buy her and then make the arrangement like they were talking about for him and come back for him in a few days. Meaning they weren't going to come back and they were just going to ditch town. Mm, that's true. Mm-hmm. So, that's what I'd do. But, all in all, the reason, and honestly, I don't care if it makes me a bad person or not. One, it was a Quentin Tarantino movie that I had to go see because I love Quentin Tarantino's work. It, it truly was the fact that it was like, oh wow, it's a Jamie Foxx, a slave movie, that's pretty cool. As soon as I saw Leonardo DiCaprio 
he was a plantation owner, he was a slave owner, I was like, sold. Just to hear Leo just drop, drop binks. Just to hear Leo just binks it up. Just binks this, binks that, I, I had to see it. I had to see it. And sure enough, it, it, it tickled me pink. That's right. I said tickle me pink. That's right. Listening to Leonardo DiCaprio say binks over and over again tinkled, uh, tickled his pink. Wait, uh, see, now you made it bad. <laughs> but overall, how'd you enjoy the movie? I That was the most enjoyable racist movie I've ever seen since Blazing Saddles. Um, high five that, buddy. High five. So I was telling, I was trying to like describe to someone like recently what Blazing Saddles was like, and they were like, "You're racist." Like, no, I'm not. It's a good movie, man. It's like, Mel, Brooks, Mel Brooks is a genius. No, I was like, "No, I'm, I'm not racist." This mo- like this not this not a racist movie. It sounds like a pretty racist movie. Excuse so, me while I whip this out. Ah! Oh. Yeah, it was just a piece of paper, folks. It was just a piece of paper. Is it true what they say about you? Oh, it's true. It's true. <laughs> what a nice guy. All right. Overall for the movie, can you believe it was actually three hours long? I can believe it. I, had, I went to a late night and I didn't get out of there until like one o'clock. Yeah. It's bad. But it was it was enjoyable. Um, I will. Not it's. I'm probably not gonna own it just because it's not something that I'm. I don't know. It wasn't uh, it wasn't the the cat's meow. It was good. Uh, it's typical uh, Tarantino. Um, that's not giving it praise or insulting it when I say that. It's just it is a genre all of its own in its own little weird. I like watching stuff from the seventies and grindhouse. Yeah, kind yeah. of shit. Uh, they just the little references that they put in there and stuff. Uh, I can tell you this, Tarantino loves to talk. And he was even in the movie, that's why I found it enjoyable too. He played an Ozzy. Hmm? When Django oh, was chained okay. up. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. does that in a few of his films though. Like he put, he, he, put, he put a little weight, didn't he? Okay, he makes money, he can eat. Let him. Okay. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> I found the movie truly enjoyable. Uh, besides my fascination with Leonardo DiCaprio dropping binks everywhere. Um... Uh, for for three hours, I have to say, please use the restroom before you go see the movie, and just don't even. Oh, man, it. I had to use the restroom like twice in that movie, and I had a soda, and I was really pissed. I had to go use the restroom because I missed some pretty neat parts. You were pissed that you had to piss. Yeah, I was pissed. Apparently, well, you know they say it's better to be pissed off than pissed on. Stephen, you agree? If I was that close to a horse's wiener, I'd be worried about being pissed on. Thank you. You're welcome. And with that note, <laughs> uh, thank you all for watching Movie Patrol again. We had the Movie Patrol here, or Movie Patrol, and can't wait for you to get back. Whoopsie! And thank you, Stevie B from Nerds of the Apocalypse. What am I supposed to... What, what controls am I supposed to hit? be able to challenge reptile i don't remember <laughs> <laughs> thank you all for watching definitely go check out django unchained it was definitely worth it was worth the free ticket that i got to go see it <laughs> you saw it for free too didn't you nope. it was definitely worth the money it's... Dirty bastard. <laughs> hey thanks thank you all for watching we'll see you guys next time Turn it off! Turn it off! Oh god!